Good morning from the 17 newsroom. I'm Alex Fisher. It is 1047 on this Wednesday and did you feel it? We have just experienced an earthquake here in Bakersfield. Although the epicenter was not in Kern County, the 6.1 magnitude earthquake uh, centered about uh, near Lone Pine, California was felt here in Bakersfield. Um, let's take a look at the map right here. It shows you where the epicenter was. Again, this was a magnitude 7.1 earthquake, and you may be uh, getting this alert on your phone right now, talking about an earthquake uh, alert. My phone's going off right now. Again, a lot of people experienced that alert uh, before the shaking started. You may remember just several months ago, it was after the uh, after the Ridgecrest earthquakes last year, where the state of California talked about the My Shake Alert app, uh, which again uh, was introduced not too long, again, several months ago. And I know a lot of people here in Bakersfield and other parts of Kern County, including uh, several of us in our newsroom, we also got that alert before we felt the shaking. It gave us several seconds uh, warning before we started to feel the shaking, and sure enough, uh, it gave us plenty of time to drop, cover, and hold on before the earthquake. Again, this is a 6.1 magnitude earthquake that is centered uh, near Lone Pine. And again, this just happened uh, within the last uh, few minutes or so, within the last 10 minutes, I believe. Uh, again, this is north of uh, Kern County. This is in Lone Pine. It is out in the, uh, apparently in the desert communities, it looks like. But again, it was a 6.1 magnitude earthquake. A lot of people across the state of California felt this, including us here in Kern County. Uh, we are, of course, getting this information in real time, so bear with us as we... Um, try to process this as the USGS is updating information as we speak right now. It does take a little bit of time for the information to be updated, um, so bear with us as we work, uh, with, work for you and in trying to uh, um, uh, understand how big of an earthquake this was. Again, we know that it was a 6.1 magnitude, uh, but we're trying to, again, find out if there were uh, any if there was a, if, if, what fault line this was on and so forth. We're also seeing a lot of aftershocks being reported right now in the area. These aftershocks are between a 3.0 to under a 4.0, uh, but definitely a lot of shaking still taking place um, at this time. So if you have uh, an earthquake, uh, an app or so, you're probably seeing a lot of that right now going off on your phone. I think a lot of people are seeing for the first time what an earthquake looks like here in Kern County with the smartphone app that was uh, unveiled just several months ago. Again, a lot of people, we're getting a lot of phone calls as well, that a lot of people felt or, or, or got a notification about the earthquake before they felt the shaking. This is a great reminder to download that app. It's called My Shake Alert. Uh, and you can set it up. It is a very nice app to, to have. That way you can get uh, a little bit of a notice before you feel the shaking. That, of course, gives you plenty of time to hold on in the event of a large earthquake. For us here in, in Kern County, we, of course, felt the shaking. Uh, but, uh, again, this epicenter, the 6.1 epicenter, was felt uh, or was uh, north of Kern County. Uh, again, we are getting more information from the USGS as it comes in. They are still in the process of reviewing it. Uh, it looks like, again, a lot of people in, in California and into Nevada felt this earthquake as well. But uh, just giving you a, a bit of an idea of where this epicenter was located, again, north of Kern County. If you remember what this looked like, uh, if you remember what this looked like uh, last year when we were dealing with a 7.1 earthquake uh, last, last year, uh, you can see the difference. It is uh, significantly uh, more north than, than the Ridgecrest earthquakes. Now, this all comes after we've seen uh, several days of uh, rattling in that area. It's almost like these were, we, we saw this coming, if you will, because we've seen this area, uh, it has been shaking for several days now in the Lone Pine area. Uh, we have heard from seismologists 
uh, including Dr. Jones, that has talked about these earthquakes, and uh, especially in this area. And it looks like, uh, I'm going to we'll go back to what she said just several days ago regarding the 4.6 earthquake that happened on July 22nd. So that was two days ago. She said that the, the, the earthquake that we saw is on a different fault, which means that it is not necessarily directly related to the earthquakes that we saw uh, several or, or last year. Uh, so again, this appears to be on a different fault line, not related to the earthquakes that we saw last year. Uh, just by coincidence, though, it is uh, north of here. We've got Kevin Shred in the Pinpoint Weather Center right now. He's kind of giving you a better look at where these, uh, where the earthquake epicenter was. It looks like it was in the middle of a lake. Um, not uh, sure if there, Kevin. I'm looking at him. Do we have? He doesn't have a mic on right now, but he is working to get more information here. It looks like there's. The map is picking up several of those aftershocks uh, right now. It looks like there are several dots in that area. But again, take a look at this. And if you remember where the earthquakes were uh, last year, uh, it definitely shows uh, that this was significantly more nor north on a different fault line from the earthquakes that we saw last year. Let's just go over what we know so far. Again, a magnitude 6.1 earthquake uh, struck near Lone Pine about 1045 this morning, about 10 minutes ago or so. Uh, this is about 100 miles northwest of Ridgecrest. Uh, so again, uh, it was, uh, it looks like it was, uh, uh, again, on a different fault line from the, the Ridgecrest earthquakes, uh, but still a very sizable magnitude. Kevin Shred is in the Pinpoint Weather Center. He's been looking at all of this information that, again, is coming in as we speak. Kev, I know you're looking over at the, this information. We should say it does take time for the USGS to kind of get everything, uh, you know, on track. Because, it, you know, we're dealing with this big earthquake. A lot of people are wanting information, but it does take time to, of course, get the accuracy uh, correct. Right, and the one thing you're going to notice here on our earthquake map is there are numerous red dots that keep appearing. Those are the aftershocks that you are seeing, these little red dots. The big dot is the actual 6.1 earthquake. These little dots that you're seeing are the aftershocks. If you're wondering where this is, again, it is just uh, south of Lone Pine. This is the Owens Lake area. This is the Lowens Ake area from Lowen, uh, from what I can see on our mapping system here. Um, but again, near Lone Pine and again, um, 6.1 and you'll continue to watch these little dots appear and that is illustrating right there those aftershocks that we are seeing again uh, they keep appearing Alex and I'm trying to get a better idea exactly this uh, this area here. Kevin, we should mention that the USGS has downgraded this uh, literally just a few seconds ago to a 5.8. Still a very large earthquake, however, uh, but it is, it, it is a 5.8. They're also reporting at least two pretty sizable aftershocks um, since the, the main one. But and, again, and a little update here, Matt, uh, Alex. I was just looking at this map trying to get my coordinates here because it, it happened so fast. I'm thinking trying to pinpoint the actual lake area here, to be honest with you. So go ahead, keep going, and I'm going to try yeah, to pinpoint you know, this a little and, better. And again, let's just kind of talk about what happens typically after an earthquake. Um, you know, I think a lot of people are more interested <laughs> in how all this comes about yeah. since last year. You know, we, we've had such a quiet time in in California's history when it, when it comes to earthquakes. Uh, you know, they said it was one of the longest stretches of inactivity, significant activity, I should say. Um, since we, since it is normal for us to see these types of earthquakes. Uh, obviously, we have had several earthquakes since Ridgecrest. Um, you, know, you may remember we've had a couple of small ones here in Bakersfield. Uh, it was just a, about a month ago we saw one uh, near Oildale yeah. uh, that rattled a lot of people. Uh, again, several weeks ago. And again, I've confirmed. I, I was having some doubts in my mind because I don't look at this area very often, but it is in the Owens Lake bed here. Okay. Um, yeah, it's north of Kern County. It is north yeah. of Kern County, just south of Lone Pine near Keeler. And I was looking at the cross sections here, and it is the Owens Lake bed. Uh, on the map, it shows water, but when I look at other imagery, it looks like it's a, it's a lake bed. It doesn't actually have water in it. Looks like maybe it's a, a mining area, um, but that is where the epicenter is, according to our mapping systems is there in the Owens Lake bed. So we should say um, we're, we this just came out moments ago uh, from the USGS 
again, it takes uh, several minutes for this information to come through. Um, but it looks like uh, Bakersfield and Bakersfield, we felt light shaking. That's what they, they were considering it. Uh, there is several categories that they have when it comes to measuring the intensity of an earthquake. There's uh, level one, which is basically no one felt it. Weak, light, moderate, strong, very strong, and so forth. Uh, we were at a level, it looks like a level four here in Bakersfield. Uh, which is considered to be, or not even in Bakersfield, in Kern County, which is considered to be light shaking. It looks like some areas felt moderate shaking, but it looks like a majority of people here in Kern County felt light shaking. Again, though, I want to, uh, and, and, and Cav, this is what's so interesting. You didn't feel it. Um, I didn't. I was uh, working in the other room on some stuff. You were moving around, though. I was moving yeah. around, so I didn't feel it. And uh, so updating that map right now, yeah, they did downgrade it to a 5.8. And again, they put it 12 miles from Lone Pine, California. Uh, and you're see seeing that map. And yeah. we just updated our map here in our our weather center. Any uh, tsunami warnings issued at no, this time? No, too far too inland. Far the inland? only time okay. we'd really see a tsunami warning is, is if we saw one of these uh, large earthquakes offshore. Right. That would cause that ripple effect to see a tsunami type event. This definitely is not something we need to worry about, tsunami along the coast or anything like that, because so far inland. Um, but, you know, with these type of earthquakes, we've heard, heard from scientists in the past, uh, aftershocks, you know, will probably continue. Doesn't mean we'll feel them here in Bakersfield. Usually with these earthquakes so far away, we'll feel the initial shock. Sometimes we don't actually feel the smaller aftershocks. Here's the thing that was interesting about this earthquake is, uh, you know, even though it, it, it 5.8, still a very strong earthquake, the, you know, when you're dealing with these larger earthquakes, you, it almost seems like it goes on for so long. You know, it, when I felt it, I heard it here in the newsroom. A lot of people, at least here in the newsroom, felt it. I should say there was, uh, uh, we were all sitting here. Kevin, I know you were in the other room. You were actually on your feet working, so you yeah, didn't feel I was, it. I was working on some equipment, and, and uh, me and another engineer, and we didn't feel any shaking at all. I heard all the commotion in the newsroom, and... Uh, that right. was first I heard about right. it, and then my phone started going off. Right, and, and that was the thing that was interesting is for us who were sitting, we definitely felt it. Uh, and we heard it, though. That was the thing. With these larger earthquakes, you can sometimes hear it, and then you start to feel the shaking, and sure enough, we did. And to we give... Sorry, Alex, didn't mean to interrupt no, you. No, no. I was looking up some uh, information because of where this is located uh, at Owens Lake. And on our map that you're seeing right now, it's in blue. You would think that it was uh, full of water. Uh, Owens Lake is actually uh, predominantly... Um, a dry lake in the Owens Valley, uh, which is just on the eastern side of the Sierra Nevada in Inyo County. Uh, it's about five miles south of Lone Pine, and uh, it's about an elevation, about 3,500 feet. Um, and so, yeah, so that's kind of the area, the epicenter of these earthquakes is in the Owens Lake bed. Um, again, about five miles south of Lone Pine. So again, we should reiterate that Dr. Lucy Jones, who is a seismologist, she has become kind of a celebrity, especially over the last several, uh, well, last month, really, or, or last year, I should say. Um, she talked specifically about the 4.6 uh, magnitude earthquake that we uh, saw just two days ago, saying that this was a different fault line. This is not in relation to what we saw last year with the Ridgecrest earthquakes, although the faults are very close together. She just... Uh, just tweeted moments ago, she says uh, again, talking about this earthquake in relation to the earthquake that we saw two nights ago, she says this is now considered a foreshock. Uh, the 4.6 that we saw two nights ago was a foreshock to the earthquake that we just experienced about 15 minutes ago. You may remember last year, it was on July 4th, uh, we had that sizable uh, magnitude 6, point oh, or, or six earthquake uh, in, in Ridgecrest. And uh, we saw you know, moments pr prior to that, about a 4.5, uh, I think it was, 4.3 to 4.5 uh, earthquake uh, that we saw just moments at before the, the, the significant earthquake. And the chances of a larger earthquake were slimmed enough and sure enough the next day we saw that even larger earthquake. Well to give you some history of this area here that I'm pulling up and learning a little more and you can see on our map the red dots continue to pop up and again these are aftershocks of the main 5.8. Um, 
if you remember back in history, you can look back 1872, the Owens Valley earthquake. Um, that was also known as the Lone Pine earthquake. It struck on March 26th at about 2.30 local time in the Owens Valley uh, with the epicenter near the town of actual Lone Pine. Uh, its magnitude uh, was estimated at about a 7.4 to 7.9. Um, again, that was back in 1872 around the same area of Lone Pine. Um, so it gives you a little bit of a history lesson of the Lone Pine area and uh, past uh, earthquakes. But again, that was March 26, 1872 when that 7.4 hit in this uh, general area. Uh, and at that time, uh, wouldn't, I would, don't know what the money of value would be today, but in 1872, there was an estimated $250,000 in damage due to that. There were 27 people killed in that earthquake with over 56 injured. So uh, it just kind of gives you an idea of this area and, and the past earthquakes. But again, uh, that was 1872. You know, again, we should note that you know, we've heard from seismologists before. It has been a very quiet 20 years in California. It has been very quiet when it comes to earthquakes. Uh, you know, when, when they, every time we come, uh, we have a seismologist come on our show, they talk about, look, this is where we live. This is the, 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 the things that go on here. We see earthquakes, but I think because it has been such a long time since we've seen a significant earthquake, uh, you know, it, it kind of spooks us. Uh, because this is something that you cannot predict. Now we should talk about what a lot of us saw this morning. And that was, you received an alert on your phone prior to the shaking. Let's explain how that all happens. You know, there, there's been a lot of um, confusion over this. That app does not predict an earthquake. It lets everyone else know when an earthquake has happened. It takes some time for the waves uh, to hit, hit other areas, right? So the closer you are to the epicenter, you may not get the alert because it's going to happen so, so fast. So the earthquake happens and it's warning people outside the epicenter that they could feel some shaking. And sure enough here, you know, in, in our newsroom, we felt said I mean, it worked. We, well, at first we were, we were confused. We've never had this alert before, yeah. you know? I mean, it came out just several months after the Ridcrest earthquakes. And so we got the alert. We all looked around and said, well, we don't feel anything, but it's because we were, it was letting us know an earthquake has happened and the shock waves are coming to Kern County. They're coming to, to Bakersfield. And sure enough, about 10, 15 seconds later, we felt it. And if we go back to the earthquake map in the weather center, I'm going to show you a few things here. I'm going to make a few adjustments on this earthquake map that I'm able to do. So right now, I have it set on one hour. I want to go, and you're going to see it kind of pop up in the blue here, but I'm going to go the last 10 days. And do you see a little light shading of blue that pops up? So in the last 10 days, we already had a small earthquake in the Owens Lake area riverbed. Um, when I click this back off to one hour, that little blue area is going to disappear. Um, so, yeah, as Malik's mentioned earlier, this area has been a little active the past 10 days. And I'm going to filter this out even more here uh, and see if I can bring this down. There we go. I'm going to take that off. And you see the little blue lines popping up? That is the past 10 days. And I'm kind of trying to count here, but there's a cluster right there. Then I bring this back all the way, God forbid, a 10.0, but I can go all the way to the scale of a 10.0. Um, but now I'm going, to, I'm going to trim it to a 5.8. If I go higher than a 6.0, it goes away. And there you go. That's between a 5.6 and a 5.8. That was the initial earthquake right there. So it is around the same area as that 10 day cluster that I showed you just a minute ago. And now I'm going to change this filter to a lesser uh, magnitude and you're going to see them start to pop up. And there you go. This is the last 10 days from a 1.0 to a 10. So very active, very active. active in this area. And I'll zoom in even a little bit more here for you and you can see um, just how active this has been uh, the last 10 days in the Owens Lake bed. So um, no surprise maybe that we did see this magnitude 5.8 uh, because of the activity that we've seen in the past days. But this map definitely shows you this has been a very active area for the past 10 days in this area. You know, and again, it is so hard to can't predict these things. You know, it, it, I know you're talking about it, Kev. I know you're, you know, you've got the map. But this is not meteorology. You know, no. this is not weather. I, you know, it's funny because people will say, oh, Kevin, are you covering the earthquakes? And I'm, I'm 
I tell people all the time, earthquakes have nothing to do with the weather. Yeah, we have the earthquake information in our weather computer and we familiarize, familiarize ourselves on earthquakes and stuff, but by far am I an expert in earthquakes. I'm just showing you what we have in front of us. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I want to get that out of the way. You know, there's no thing as earthquake weather. No, there's a lot no, of rumors no. that go around during earthquakes and, and theories and all that stuff. It's Again, seismology has nothing to do with meteorology. No. <laughs> totally different. You can't forecast even at all, not even a little bit in terms of earthquakes. Well, let's you just, know where the faults are. But. Right, you know where the faults are. And let's just kind of go back to what Dr. Lucy Jones just said. Uh, she, you know, just tweeted three minutes ago. Uh, she said, you know, talking about the four shock, the 4.64 shock, she said, you know, that does not necessarily mean that there's going to, you, know, you don't know what a four shock is until there's a bigger earthquake. And maybe explain again foreshock. A force, yeah, exactly. A foreshock is something that, an earthquake that happened before the bigger earthquake, right? So it could lead up to a bigger one. Right, and remember, uh, during Ridgecrest, we saw about a 4.3, 4.5 earthquake before the six, magnitude 6 earthquake on the 4th of July. So that's what we're seeing in those little green and blue dots here the past 10 days. Those, according to Dr. Lucy, those could have been the foreshocks to the, the 5.8 that we saw this morning. Correct, and I want to go back to what Lucy Jones, Dr. Lucy Jones said. She said the 4.6 was a foreshock to this event, and she stresses a foreshock is not known until a bigger earthquake happens. So now we know that that 4.6 was a foreshock. She also says, like every earthquake, there is a 5% chance, historically speaking, that there's going to be something bigger. So still very slim chance but there is, of course, always that chance that there could be something bigger. I want to go talk a little bit about what our local officials are saying in Kern County. They were very quick to respond on social media after this earthquake, and they said, start preparing now. Don't, you shouldn't panic. No. You know, there's a lot of panic that happens after we've experienced something like this, because truly we do not know if there's going to be a bigger earthquake that happens. Uh, yeah, there's always that possibility. Like Dr. Lucy Jones says, there's a 5% chance of something bigger happening. Our local officials are not saying necessarily prepare for something big right now. They're reiterating their message that it is always a good time to stay prepared because you never know whether it's an earthquake, whether it's a fire. I mean, for goodness sakes, Kev, we, a, a flood could happen in, you know, during the winter months. We just don't right. know. It's always good to kind of go through those, uh, you know, to stay prepared during some sort of natural uh, disaster or a significant event. Yeah, you know people are home are going, geez, anything else can happen? We're dealing with COVID. Now we have this an earthquake we're dealing with this morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you're right. Uh, fire officials, again, came out really quick and said, make sure we're just prepared and we should be prepared. We live in California. We've seen uh, earthquakes before. We saw the Ridgecrest earthquake. That was a, I'll be honest with you, that was an eye-opening experience for myself. And I'm, I don't even live in Ridgecrest. You know, I have a first aid kit now. I have water supply, uh, you know, bottles of water. Um, I had you know the gas company come out and check my meter and and my shutoff valve in case there was a major earthquake and I had leaking gas because I'll be honest with you Alex when the Ridgecrest earthquake came out and I had the gas company come out they tell you just because there's an earthquake don't go out and shut your gas off that's only if there is a leak but I'll be honest with you if I would have had a leak from an earthquake, I wouldn't have been able to shut my gas off because my main valve was seized. I actually had to have PG&E uh, come out yeah. and put a new um, valve on there. So just things we should all think about, and these are all kind of eye-openers. Um, I want to uh, just reiterate kind of where this earthquake is located. Uh, here's what we know. It is 11:11 on this Wednesday morning, and here's what we know so far from this earthquake. It was a magnitude 5.8 earthquake that uh, was 12 miles from Lone Pine, California. As you can see, the largest earthquake that we've seen was a 5.8. Uh, there have been several other aftershocks since then. Kevin has also pointed out there were several four shocks over the last several days. We saw a 4.6 magnitude earthquake that is now being considered a four shock uh, just two days ago. So again, this is kind of that sequence of events. It is a different fault from the Ridgecrest earthquakes less than a year ago, almost a year ago. Kev, do you realize that we're coming up on the year anniversary of, uh, of yeah. uh, Ridgecrest? Um, again, this is north of Ridgecrest, however, a different fault line. It is north of the Naval Air uh, uh, Airspace uh, uh, Center in, in, in China Lake. 
Uh, so again, very active scene though right now as we deal with uh, aftershocks from that magnitude 5.8. It was originally posted as a 6.1. It has since been downgraded uh, from the USGS. Well, let's, um, we have someone on the phone with us uh, this morning. And uh, let's, let's, uh, let's see if we can uh, bring him up. Uh, this is Jalen Wright. Uh, he is a, a, an employee at Best Western in Lone Pine, uh, very close to the epicenter. Uh, Jalen, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Uh, thanks so much for uh, joining us. I know you're probably uh, a little shaken up after this 5.8 magnitude earthquake. Uh, we felt it here in Bakersfield. I know you are very close to the epicenter where you really felt the shaking. Can you just walk me through what happened and what you felt? So at first I was on my computer doing some stuff and then the earthquake just starts out just popping up and down, just up and down movement. And then just a side to side movement, just really rapidly out of the blue. How long do you think the shaking last lasted? The first half was like two seconds and then it changed to a type of shake like another two seconds or like a three second. Yeah. Um, any damage? Have you seen anything, any damage or anything like that being reported in that area in Lone Pine? Uh, no damage. I've heard some people at their houses, stuff has fallen over. A couple of things fall, fell over here in the back room and a couple of signs fell over too. So nothing, uh, nothing too bad. Uh, 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 did you experience the earthquake last year near Ridgecrest in Trona? Yes. Yes, I did. I experienced the 7.1. Yes. And how did that compare to what you felt today? I mean, I know you, you are obviously uh, closer to the epicenter with this earthquake, but since you felt both, how did this one compare? Um, the 7.1 in Ridgecrest was more like a rolling, more like a, like a side roll. For you in Lone Pine? Yeah, I was in Lone Pine at both. But the Ridgecrest one was more of like a rolling, like a wave coming down, and this one was just like an up and down, like sharp movement. Stuff was jumping. It wasn't swaying. It was jumping, and then it just slowly tapered off to more of like a, a rolling motion. And uh, how, how are people you know, feeling right now? I, I, I know you've just experienced that earthquake. I know there's been several aftershocks after that 5.8. Are people still uh, are, are people on edge right now? Oh, yeah. People are definitely on edge. People don't want to just don't want to go nowhere or they either want to get the heck out of here. I heard that from a guest, too. Uh, what is, you know, in that area, you experienced a 4.6 magnitude earthquake uh, just two nights ago. Did you feel that one? Um, I was actually in Las Vegas. Oh, you were in Las Vegas at the time. Well, let me ask you, I mean, since you just felt or since the area just had that 4.6 earthquake which is now being considered a four shock to this 5.8 was uh were there people talking about the possibility of a larger earthquake happening uh were were, were people completely caught off guard by this 5.8 or in the back of of people's minds were they kind of expecting something like this so me and my family we always know earthquakes can happen anytime and those four shocks we just always always ready for the big one we just always think that there's a big one coming and we just not enjoy them but we always expect them right right um I, I, our uh weatherman kevin charette has a question for you jalen jalen you know i looked at the history of this area and do, have you ever been to the uh, owens uh, lake area oh uh, yes i have i've been to the owens lake area can you tell our viewers here locally that maybe have not been up there this is an empty lake bed correct Yes, it is. Because we're looking at all the, uh, the, the main earthquake and all the aftershocks and even the past 10 days, this lake bed has been very, very active. Yeah, so I've never ever heard of a fault going through Owens Lake, but now we have DWP telling us that that, that fault is moving up from the Searles Valley up to Owens Lake, and that could be like a possibility. So it's just hitting the lake hard. Gotcha. Yeah, you know, I, I again, a lot of our viewers probably haven't been maybe to Lone Pine or even to that lake. And it, on our maps, it's full of water, but it's not full of water. Um, so that's why I wanted to get a little perspective. And looking back at the history, too, and I don't even know if you know this, but there was a pretty good earthquake in that area back in 1872. Were you aware of that? Yes, I, I am. You know the history of Lone Pine, that's for sure. <laughs> yes, and... They've got a whole little um, historical site here about that whole earthquake that destroyed the town. 
Well, Jalen Wright, I am glad to hear that you are doing okay. I'm glad to hear that there is not at least uh, significant damage uh, to the area. I know that this is still a very considerable earthquake uh, that you have all experienced in Lone Pine in several areas. Uh, again, I mean, a, a 5.8 is a very strong quake, so uh, glad to hear that you are okay. I know that uh, you are all, you know, just on edge right now, but thanks so much for taking the time to, to talk to us uh, t this morning. No problem. All right, that was again Jalen Wright uh, in Lone, Pain, Lone Pine. Let's uh, show you some video from Bakersfield that shows what uh, some chandeliers look like uh, here in town. Again, uh, not a, a lot of shaking, but enough to definitely get your attention. Uh, this was sent to us from a viewer, and it just shows just a little bit of shaking, and that's all it really was here in Bakersfield. But again, it was enough for us to really uh, feel the shaking. We should note though, again, if you were sitting down, you probably felt it. Kevin Shrett was in the, an another room, <laughs> uh, literally probably, you know, 20, 50, 20 to 50 yards from a, a, a lot of us, but you were on your feet working around. You didn't feel a thing. Didn't feel a thing, not at all. And you know, we are continuing to see these aftershocks and you can see on our map and uh, just getting a alert that uh, a 3.1 aftershock uh, uh, struck the area just north, northeast uh, about uh, two minutes ago, so we're going to continue to see these aftershocks. I mean, we'll be talking about them for days to come. Oh, oh I mean, let's <laughs> weeks, talk about uh, weeks, maybe months, months, maybe. Yeah, I mean, look at what's going on in Ridgecrest. We should but, know again. This is a separate <laughs> fault line. This is has nothing to do with the uh, the fault lines that uh, run through Ridgecrest. that run through Ridgecrest, and, and you know, but but Kev, and you know, this, a good point though. You know, he was talking about, scientists had talked about in the last few weeks that there is a fault line near the Owens Lake and that fault line has been lifting and they've been saying that, you know, it could affect the Owens Lake area. And I mean, I'm looking at this map and there's no aftershocks, no, you know, even the main uh, earthquake, it's all in the Owens Lake bed. You know, let's, let's just kind of talk about where we live, you know? <laughs> I mean, this is really, I mean, history shows this is not unusual, you know, as Dr. Lucy Jones said, actually a lot of seismologists said after the Ridgecrest earthquakes, don't be surprised by this. We should not be surprised that we just experienced this, uh, this earthquake. So uh, it's just a reminder of where we live. It is a reminder of we need to be prepared. Uh, we were lucky over the last 20 years to kind of remain calm and, and quiet, if you will, across the state. Uh, but again, this is something that we deal with. There are countless, I feel like, uh, fault lines that run up and down the state. You know, it's not just the uh, 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 San Andreas Fault. That's, of course, the one that has the Hollywood name, if you will. <laughs> Everyone knows about the San Andreas Fault. But we have faults here in Kern County. We uh, have several faults in our mountain communities, in our desert communities, uh, in our uh, in, in the valley regions as well. So it's just a reminder of where we live and uh, what could happen. That's why it's also a good reminder to start preparing now. The uh, Kev, the USGS has just updated its map on where this earthquake was felt it is truly all up and down the state of california not not too surprising <laughs> i mean it was a pretty significant earthquake oh where they felt where it. they felt it again the strongest shaking near the epicenter here in bakersfield and in kern county it looks like it was considered light to moderate shaking weak shaking reported in southern california but the Central to northern part of the Central Valley, again, between light and moderate shaking, some areas reporting strong shaking. Uh, my family is actually in Lake Tahoe right now on vacation. They had no idea. Yeah. Uh, they, they, and they were, in, they were sitting does down. Does the map show Fresno? How, how did, it does show Fresno. It shows that they felt it. Uh, probably, probably similar to maybe a little stronger than, than what we felt here in Bakersfield some areas. We'll have to check in with our sister station in Fresno mm -hmm. and see kind of what they experienced. Las way. Vegas, they felt it as well. It's showing up on the map. Um, but again, it looks like it was felt as far south as Mexico, as far west as Las Vegas, some parts of Arizona, and all the way up, up the state of California. Bay Area felt weak shaking. So again, but when you're dealing with the 5.8 magnitude earthquake, yeah, I mean, it's going to uh, really it's going to really affect a, 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 a large, large area for sure. Uh, we have, of course, more news coming up today on 17 News at noon. Uh, we are working for you to get more information on this earthquake. 
as you know, we want to reiterate that this is something that uh, it, it takes a while to get all of these all of the information in because there's a preliminary report that the USGS sends out seconds after an earthquake, then they have to go back, you know, science, <laughs> they have to go back in and make sure that it is the exact uh, report. Uh, Kev, it looks like there's another very small earthquake uh, oh, just yeah, right to here. the west of that lake. Yeah, let me, um, I'm going to switch off to a different mode here. Our screen may go uh, black just a little bit for a second until I reinitiate it. Um, gives me a quick sec here. All right, all right. Let's Looks like uh, Kevin's readjusting yeah. his map. Well, hey, Kev, while you readjust that there map, you go. I want to give uh, I want to give our viewers a message from uh, our local geologist Emily Fisher. Uh, you know, she is she is from Kern County. She has uh, studied not only earthquakes, but she's actually studied the area in our desert communities and in all the fault lines there. We have talked to her uh, over the past year over all of the earthquakes that have happened uh, since the big earthquakes in, in Ridgecrest. She sent us a quick message saying. Uh, that the fault where this earthquake happened, uh, again, not in relation to the Ridgecrest earthquakes, this new fault line that happened north of Ridgecrest, it's a separate fault, uh, she says is the new San Andreas because there's so much activity that is, it, that is happening in our desert communities, in our desert region, where there's been a lot of shaking on several different uh, fault lines. But again, here's, here's a look at the, the latest earthquakes uh, in near Lone Pine. So we're still seeing a cluster of these uh, still popping up these aftershocks. Now we have an aftershock uh, just west of that area. This is a small one, 1 1.8 on uh, the scale, but it uh, again did pop up right now. We're seeing most of the aftershock activity, of course, no surprise by the epicenter of the 5.8, but we're starting to see the a few small little aftershocks west of that area. And again, just a 1.8 Eight there where I'm pointing at that dot. Yeah, again, it's just the whole area is is shaking. To be expected. I mean, we don't want to we don't want to cause alarm, right? No. We don't want to cause alarm. This is normal. This is we don't want to stress that this is not a big deal. It's a very significant earthquake. It's just a reminder of uh, you know where we live and, and, and some of the things that we experience. We just talked to you know Jalen Wright, who is in Lone Pine, who lives in Lone Pine, and as he said, they're always expecting earthquakes. They are always prepared for what would happen if there was a large and devastating earthquake. Now he said in Lone Pine uh, there's no damage from his perspective. He said a few things fell off the shelves, uh, some signs fell down and so forth, as to be expected as for a 5.8. But uh, again, nothing, uh, nothing that uh, was, was you know, devastating, uh, which is of course good news, but but still very very strong an yeah. earthquake. Yeah, and we can actually on this map now the red box you see that that's uh, a box that I had put on there uh, for that initial quake. Uh, but if I click on this, a uh, box is going to pop up as you'll see, and uh, that shows that little one. Uh, depth of two miles, 1.8. Now, if I click on one of these boxes in the Owens Lake area, um, you'll see a different box. So there it is. There's the initial. Uh, magnitude of 5.8 coming from our data system at 1040 and it was a depth of three miles um, and then we kind of pull out to these little green dots and you can see these were very small Alex 1.1 1 1.2 1 um, all the green ones that I'm so like you said little four shocks to the uh, 5.8 uh, if I click over here uh, 1059 there was a 4.5 just east of the main so epicenter. Th that's that's probably yeah, that's what, 15 minutes, I think? Yes. After the, so I'm clicking the large these right one. Now. Yeah, the large one is right here. If I click on it, see if it selects it again. There it is, 1040. So that's when the 5.8 happened. 1040. That's when the 5.8. And then if I click over to the 1059, a 4.5. So these were all aftershocks. These green clusters that you're seeing, when I click on those, those are just the small ones. And that is in uh, the past 12 to 24 hours. If I click on the blue one, that is a 1.5 and that was more than 24 hours so within the past 10 days so just north and east of the main epic uh, northwest of the main epicenter we were seeing those those four shocks and then we saw the main shock of that 5.8 which uh, i'm illustrating here uh, we just got an email from one of our viewers uh, grace stone who says he lives near the canyon of highway 178 he says that the swing was so strong he said it seemed longer than others that we've had in the past so uh, uh, yeah, so he said that he definitely felt the air, uh, felt the shaking 
in the Rio Bravo area uh, this morning around 1040. Let's uh, turn things over to uh, our local geologist, Emily Fisher, who has uh, joined us for several months over uh, since the big earthquakes in Ridgecrest. She has uh, come on the show before. Uh, Emily, thanks so much for taking some time to, to meet with us. Yeah, thanks for having me. So you know this area very well. You've studied it before. Um, we've mm -hmm. heard you talk about the Ridgecrest earthquakes and the faults in the desert. What is your, what, are, what are some of the things that stand out to you as you look at the activity that's happening uh, in this new fault area? Um, yeah, so I did my master's thesis out in this area uh, along the uh, Eastern California shear zone. Um, so the faults that we're seeing today, uh, and there's like quite a cluster that we had a few foreshocks. Um, big earthquake come in, some aftershocks. Um, they're all along that um, Eastern California shear zone system. Uh, and specifically at the surface, we've got the Owens Valley Fault. And if you've ever been out to Lone Pine, you can see the scarps where um, we've seen that fault break to the surface. Um, these earthquakes are happening just following down along that line a little bit further to the south. I wanna ask you something because a lot of people experienced and they got the alert that there was an earthquake coming before we felt the shaking. For me personally, this is the first time that I received an alert on my phone that said expect shaking, you know, giving us the warning to drop, cover, and hold on. Uh, that was the first time that I experienced it. I will say it was a little terrifying because I, we did not know what type of shaking was going to occur, whether it was going to be light shaking or uh, you know, violent shaking. Can you explain though a little bit about how that alert works? Because I've heard it is not a prediction of an earthquake. No, not at all. And it's um, it's really exciting that the um, earthquake uh, alert system that was installed last year, we're actually getting to see it work um, for the first time. Um, so what's happening is that if you're right next to the, the earthquake, there's a lot of different waves that come off of it. Um, and sometimes, I, I know in our house, we felt the, the P wave first. It goes directly. So this is the curvature of the Earth. The P wave will go directly from the earthquake, travel underneath, and go straight to you. It's the shortest distance, whereas the, the waves that do the big shaking, um, it's the much scarier part, um, they travel along the surface. So it takes them a little bit longer to get here. Um, and that earthquake system finds out like all right an earthquake is happening and while those surface waves are traveling to you it gives you that alert so it's a few seconds to to drop cover and hold i mean i will say for us we had at least 10 seconds i believe 10 15 seconds before we actually mm -hmm. felt the shaking and i will admit at, at first it I, we thought it was kind of a false alarm because we had never experienced <laughs> something like this before we've also received uh actually i had a, a couple of family members say that they received an alert over the radio um, and say, you know, kind of the same thing. So like you said, this is kind of the first time that we've really seen this in action. And I know that the state of California has even said that there's uh, some work to be done to this system, but it was interesting to see it for the first time play out. Can you talk a little bit about what we saw last year with the Ridgecrest earthquakes and what we're seeing now? Does this mean that this could trigger other faults in California? maybe the San Andreas Fault, maybe other faults nearby uh, that could cause something else to happen? Um, so it's really hard to, um, to tell if like one quake that happens is going to trigger another one. Um, since last year, right, we kind of had this quiet period of time for nearly 10 years where there wasn't a lot of um, seismicity, there weren't a whole lot of earthquakes. And then and that was the weird thing, right? To not have earthquakes in California. Um, the plates are moving and sliding like past one another on a geologic time scale. Like we should have that motion, but for us, like, it, you know, 10 years of not having them was unusual. So having quakes that kind of seemed to start happening after last year is much more the case. And one of the things that I find really interesting, I mean, we have the San Andreas Fault, you know, over uh, to the west of us in Bakersfield, that's the, um, you know, has the movies named after it is the big press, um, you know, whenever people look in a textbook for strike slip faults, that's it. Now, a lot of that motion is moving over to the Eastern California shear zone. So it's kind of like stepping even further over to the east. So it makes a lot more sense that we're going to see more earthquakes 
happening in that eastern area on the eastern side of the Sierras than we have in the past because that's kind of where the motion's moving. All right, Emily Fisher, thanks so much for joining us. We really appreciate you taking the time to kind of put things in perspective uh, for us. As, as you know, a, a lot of us have not experienced a, a large earthquake in quite some time or ever, and it because it has been a long time since we've experienced these earthquakes. Uh, so thanks so much for uh, coming on to, to talk about this latest earthquake. Uh, and I'm sure we'll hear from you uh, later on today. Thanks so much, Emily. Yeah, my pleasure. Okay. Thanks. Uh, let's just recap what we know so far. A magnitude 5.8 earthquake happened, uh, struck the near Lone Pine uh, this morning at 1040. It was originally a 6.1 earthquake. Uh, that was the preliminary data that came into the USGS. The USGS has downgraded it to a 5.8, still uh, a significant quake for sure. The waves were, as, uh, were felt as far away as uh, parts of uh, Nevada, Las people in Las Vegas felt it. Arizona, it was felt as far south as uh, parts of Mexico. Uh, and it, people all up and down the state of California felt this quake in some capacity. For us here in Kern County, many of us received an alert before the shaking started, warning us that there was an earthquake and that the waves, uh, that shaking was to be expected. Uh, a lot of people received that alert on their phones or radio, some even are reporting that they saw it on TV. So again, that is something that a lot of us experience for the first time. Uh, this is the largest earthquake in a series of events that we've seen over the last several days. You may remember two nights ago, a 4.6 magnitude earthquake uh, shook Keeler, again, just two days ago. And since then, uh, we've seen that 5.8. That makes the 4.6 earthquake a foreshock. And uh, Dr. Lucy Jones, who is a well-known seismologist, says that there is a 5% chance that there could be a larger earthquake, but she says that is the same percentage as any earthquake. There's a 5% chance of a larger one after uh, another following an earthquake. We have more coverage for you coming up today on 17 News at noon. Of course, we have more on our website, kget.com. But for now, I'm Alex Fisher in the 17 News Center. We'll see you back here in about uh, 25 minutes for 17 News at noon.